Hello, my name is Amanda Graining, and I am a forecaster and the fire weather program leader at the National Weather Service office in Duluth, Minnesota. This video is a tutorial on the new spot forecast request and monitoring website. The purpose of developing this new site was to create a single consolidated interface for all spots, thus eliminating the need for over a hundred separate web pages, all specific to every National Weather Service office. This site encompasses Google Mapping, as well as has the capabilities to produce spot forecasts for non-fire hazards such as hazmat incidents and search and rescue. At the time this video is being produced, the new spot forecast and monitoring website is not yet active, but it is anticipated to come online in April. Also note that although there will be a new spot web page available soon for use, the current spot web page will also remain operational through the 2015 fire season. So with that introduction, now let's go take a tour. This will become the home page for all spot requests. Here there are two options. You can go directly into the spot request interface by clicking here, or you can enter the site to monitor spots in your area, the region, or even the entire country by clicking here. We're going to walk through an example of submitting our own spot request, so we'll go ahead and click on Submit Spot Request. The first step is to enter your location. This site now gives a user a variety of options. You can either type in your city in the blue box here, or if you know your latitude and longitude in either decimals or degrees, you can enter it in this section down here. You even have the option of entering your national grid location, if you know that, over here to the right. No matter what format you choose, the other fields will all adjust appropriately. For example, if I type in Ely, Minnesota and hit plot address, we'll notice that a latitude and longitude automatically went to the correct location, as well as the map below now plotted my point. Let's try an example of using the latitude and longitude I have for a location for our prescribed burn. We'll go ahead and enter 4792 and 9386. We'll go ahead and hit plot. Now, since it's mapped directly below, I can verify that the location of my coordinates are correct. Also, from this map, I can make adjustments. For example, if my prescribed burn is actually locating just a little bit to the east on the other side of County Road 6, I just grab my marker, move it over to the correct location. In response, the latitude and longitude values have adjusted to match the map. Once your location is set, you can scroll down below the map, and here you will select your incident type. This will default to wildfire, so if this is a prescribed burn, we'll want to go over here and select prescribed fire. Finally, we're going to scroll down and click on generate a spot request, which takes us to the spot request form. It's in this form that we're going to first enter our project name, which we'll just call test, a requesting agency, which we'll just say is the National Weather Service, We'll fill in these for our test. For the reason of the spot request, generally you'll be selecting the top one, which is just the interagency agreement. Now the latitude and longitude box, you should not have to change. This is all carried over from the previous page. Over here to the right, you can enter any more information you have about the fire, such as the size and fuels. If we go down below into the forecast information, this is where you will set the date and start time for our prescribed burn. We'll default to today, and we'll say it's starting at 20, and it will also default to your local time zone. Below that, we're going to select the forecast periods that we're requesting and we'll just say tonight, Monday, and Monday night. There's also a section over in the bottom right corner to add any kind of remarks that you feel would be important for the forecaster to know about the fire, the fire area. Finally, the observations. You now have options to have multiple observations um, along with your spot request, even though only one is going to be required. 
Finally, scroll on down and when we're all set, we hit Submit Request. Now, this comes to our Forecast Monitor page. You're going to locate your request by the project name you used on your request form, which we said was Test. The Status column here tells us that our request is still pending. For this example, we're going to go ahead and view a spot that's already been completed. We'll go down here. We just click on the project name, and we're brought to the site, which at the top has all the information that we put in our spot request. And if we scroll down a little ways, we'll see where the forecast will be put. As in the previous spot uh, request page, there's a box for any feedback that wants to be sent to the National Weather Service office. Now below this box, there's a few new important features. First, there's the ability now to copy info into a new incident. And also, there's an option to copy the same info into a new request for the same incident. With either of these options, you'll have the opportunity to edit the information that's copied over once you're on the next page. Also, there's a new link to request an immediate forecast update. This link will take you to an interface where you're asked for a current weather observation from the incident, so the forecaster has a starting place. Now we're going to go back up and return to our forecast monitor page. Here I'm going to point out a few new features. There's now an option to make a correction to a pending spot request over here by clicking on Change Request. There's also a link to an interface that will allow you to enter observations from your burn here at Submit OBS. When an incident is finished, it can be closed by the Weather Forecast Office. Once this is done, all the forecast information are moved to an archive. This archive can be accessed by clicking on the calendar up here in the top right. Once you're in the calendar mode, you can simply choose Archived Request to go back through previous spots. One last feature is that from the Forecast Monitor page, there's a link in the top right corner that will take you directly back to the form to submit a new spot request. That concludes the overview of the Spot Forecast and Monitoring page. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me or your local fire weather focal point.